So we're in San Diego for OFC 2019. I'm here with Preet from Macom. Preet, good to see you. Good to see you too. So just give us a reminder of where Macom sits in the uh, the, the optical ecosystem here. Well, where are you in, in all the moving parts of this sector? Yeah, great question. Um, at this OFC, uh, we're actually very proud to share uh, the space in our booth with our customers. Okay. So we have what's right behind me in the glass box, what we call the innovation zone. And in the innovation zone, we are showcasing, I should say our customers are showcasing the products that they have built using our components okay. and our support. So it, it, it runs the gamut of our portfolio. So on the optical side, these products include the lasers, silicon photonics, the photodiodes, and on the electronic side, both uh, for PAM4 and Coherent, uh, we have the drivers, the TIs, and the CDRs. Okay. Um, but what we thought would be interesting is for people to see what our customers have been able to accomplish sure. in terms of building their products utilizing our components. Okay. That's, that's, that's the whole purpose of the Innovation Zone at OFC this year. Um, so the way I would look at Macom and the overall ecosystem is um, we can be your one-stop shop, uh, if you choose to use best of breed, that's fine. But when you look at the space between the ethernet switch and the optical fiber, we have the complete transmit and the receive signal chain. So what I mean by that is we pick up the signal from where the ethernet switch leaves, um, and we can then, uh, let's say, talk about a laser driver or a CDR in the transmit path, which then feeds into our own internal lasers and can be silicon photonics engine. Okay. That's on the transmit path. On the receive path, again, you have the silicon photonics. We have our own photodiodes. We have on our own TIAs. Now, if you go up to higher speeds, uh, beyond 25 NRZ, on the PAM4, we also have the DR1 um, DSP. And what's unique there is uh, we have a separation of two kilometer and 10 kilometer. Right. And we then also help our customers with a very, very comprehensive reference designs. So the time to market for our customers goes down, the R&D investment that our customer needs to make goes down, and they're able to take our reference design and very quickly go to manufacturing okay. with that. Okay. Uh, that we believe is a very good aid at these higher speeds, complex transceivers, is to give them in addition to the components. Okay. So it sounds like you're, you're, you're covering a lot of ground there. So can you just talk about what kind of applications and what kind of markets your customers are then addressing with the products they're building with your components and also what kind of trends you're seeing that are driving demand for your products and what your customers are doing? Yeah, so I think last year when we were at OFC, we talked a lot about um, data centers. So clearly the data centers are still the major driver uh, of CapEx and therefore for the products that our customers build. Um, so that trend, uh, we believe, is very, very healthy. So 100 gig will continue to ramp all the way out to 2023. Uh, there's some interesting charts that have been shown uh, at the OFC, uh, some by our customers where they believe the 100 gig cycle is long and we're just at the beginning. Now, what hasn't happened yet is the enterprise upgrades. Right, so okay. depending on which reports you look at, less than 30% of the total ports are actually enterprise. And the enterprise is where I was mentioning earlier, the 10 kilometer would be important. Okay. And you'll need that, so campus installations. So those upgrades haven't even started yet. What's also new this year is the 5G. And 5G impacts us in a, in a bunch of ways. Okay. Um, we are not at Mobile World Congress, so I'll leave the radio part out, where we also this have products. so fresh. Yeah, exactly. You weren't, you weren't I didn't go through the uh, jet lags that you did. Uh, but the coherent market, which is essentially the way to get traffic into and out of these access networks for radios, um, we already seen an uptick in that. Okay. So our coherent metro business has seen a, early, a, a build out, which is obviously a build out to facilitate the 5G deployment. Um, then you move closer to the network where you have 25 gig SIPRI. Uh, uh, we see a, a lot of design activity there, especially in the Asia market for, uh, for now. Um, and we also are seeing a 50 gig analog parts being uh, designed in into the wireless access network. Okay. So we talked about data centers in the past. Yes, they're absolutely the key driver. The enterprise cycle is about to start. 
and the 5G cycle is creating demand both in the access as well as in the metro long haul. Okay, interesting. So you mentioned the 100 gig, you know, this has been a topic of conversation for years and years now, but this is a market still driving business and driving demand. But obviously, you know, at this kind of show, there's a, you know, 200 gig, 400 gig and beyond is talked about. Where are we exactly in the 100, 200, 400 gig cycles? Where, where very, is the very good. So, so let me right off the bat make a statement which is pretty obvious, but it, it sometimes gets lost in our conversations. These cycles overlap. So 400 doesn't cannibalize 100, 100 doesn't cannibalize 200, 200 doesn't cannibalize 100. They're going to overlap. I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a second. The 4x25 NRZ is where the volumes are today. That's what's shipping in high volume. And when I say high volume, I mean millions of units. So last year, I believe it's public record, we enabled close to 6 million optical modules with our components. Um, this year, most of the year is still out there, but we believe, very confident, we'll enable about 8 million. And if you see some of the other trends start overlapping, maybe up to 10 million. Wow. So 8 to 10 million modules will be enabled. So that's, that's the beauty of the 100 gig ramp that's ongoing. Okay. And I said earlier, it will continue till 2023. 200 is very interesting. Um, some major cloud guys um, have decided to adopt 200 maybe on the way to or on the road to 400. Okay. And at 200, there's uh, two options. One is you can implement it with DSPs. So you have four by 50 links, basically, coming out of Tomahawk 3, the, the switch. Uh, or you could use our analog parts. So again, behind me in the innovation zone, one of our customers has built a very, very compelling uh, transceiver with a four by 50 and eight by 50. And the four by 50, is, 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 is very, very compelling. It's 25 to 30% lower power. Okay. And I won't quantify the cost, but it's lower cost as well than right. a DSP alternative. So we believe that's a very compelling new product that's gonna pick up its own uh, deployment cycle. For 400, to be very um, candid with you, the right process node for 400 DSPs is seven nanometer. And that's a very big check to write. So if you, if you open up a 400 gig transceiver and let's say you draw a pie chart of where all the dollars are, how many dollars are DSP, how many dollars are electronic components, and how many dollars is the optics? The optics and the components dwarf the share of dollar capture available to you than the DSP. Okay. And interestingly, the flip side of the coin is these, these components, the optical and electronics, actually take a lot less investment significantly less investment than a seven nanometer DSP. So our approach with 400 is, um, we're gonna capture the majority of the dollar content around other DSPs. Okay. Whereas for 100 gig, we have a DR1 solution. It's actually being um, openly demonstrated in the OFC booths today. Um, and there we have done a couple of interesting things. One is in our DR1 solution, we have integrated the driver. So our customers always want to see, show me the eye diagram of your part. And most DSP vendors will show the eye diagram at the output of the DSP. With our integrated drivers, they can actually show you the eye that's presented to the optical engine, all the way at the end of the electrical signal and at the beginning of the optical signal. So that's very compelling. Again, it helps our customers reduce the time they have to spend in designing it in. Right. We also, I talked about earlier, have implemented a long range FEC so we can support 10 kilometer ranges, not just two. Two is interesting for data center, 10 is interesting for enterprise campus as well as wireless. So wireless will need, some percentage of wireless will need longer distances. And now that we're talking about wireless, I have to say wireless needs industrial temp. So we're gonna support industrial temp in our DSP and also CIPRI encapsulation right. and all the networking functions you require around, around CIPRI. So 100 has got very long legs. It's being deployed. Um, we have solved uh, you know, technical challenges, supply challenges. Um, we are enabling our customers. You know, eight to 10 million would be a healthy um, target this year. 200, we are in play at the large cloud guys with four by 50 analog solutions. And for 100 gig DR1, we have a differentiated DSP. Um, not only that, 
uh, if you look at who has majority of the Ethernet ports, those are some of our lead customers. So in our business, as you know, you don't need quantity of designs, you need the quality of design wins. Because the market is consolidating, and there's more and more um, clumps of suppliers that the cloud guys are going to. They're not going to 20, 15, two dozen uh, players anymore. Right, right. So getting design wins at the right customers is very, very critical now. Mm -hmm. And with our DSP, we have that. Okay, great. Thank you, thanks good. for the opportunity. Thanks for the catch up. Thank great you. To see you again. Very good to see you.